<laughs> I'm actually kind of light right now. Holy cow. I ran up too fast. Something's wrong with me. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Jason Quid, and today I want to do something just a bit different. Recently, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine, and we were talking about what the landscape of art looked like as we were coming up. I remember frequently feeling so lost on where to start. It's very seldom that we can find out what we're good at without some trial and error. Now, trial and error is great. I'm all for it. But sometimes, if you have a little bit too much trial and error, it can feel a bit overwhelming. So I had a thought. Why not use this platform to give people a little bit of ease in the transition between knowing and not knowing what to do next? So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna call this a beginner's guide to painting. And we're gonna do a whole series on it. Today, we're talking about the basics. One of the biggest hurdles I had when I began painting was I had absolutely no idea where to start. And if you know anything about painting or just art supplies in general, they can be really expensive. So trying to transition between things and figure out what works and what doesn't work get a little pricey. The idea here is to soften the blow a little bit. I want you to know where to start. And honestly, if you've painted before, this could be a little helpful so you know exactly the kind of things that you should get and the kind of things that you don't need. So like I said, in this series, we're going to begin with the basics. We're going to talk about five different categories. Paint, brushes, canvases, palettes, and extras. Now remember, the goal here is not to get the top of the line things. The goal is to keep the budget low while still giving ourselves the opportunity to learn in a proper way. I don't want the cost to be so daunting that it actually overwhelms the idea of painting itself. So today we're gonna to put together a bit of a kit of sorts and make sure that we have absolutely everything we need and honestly some things that we don't, but they're gonna be really nice to have. So where do we start? Well, can't do anything without actual paint. Right? If you have all the supplies, the one thing you absolutely need is the paint. That's why they call it painting. Duh. So let's start with what type of paints do we need? Now today we're going to focus mainly on acrylics for a number of reasons, but the most important is the applications are wide and the cost is low. That doesn't mean that in this kit you can't replace some of these things for oils and watercolors, but it's technically the most versatile and the lowest cost. So we're just going to stick to acrylics today. So let's start with what acrylic paint we should actually get. Now there are many different types of acrylic paint, but today we're going to focus solely on soft body paints. Because when you're learning, soft body is probably the easiest to manipulate. So let's start with colors. Which ones do we need? Well, there's only five actually, but I don't want you to buy a kit. You know, you go to the store and you grab that little box of all those different colors. Remember, we're only using five. So we can actually save a little bit on the back end by buying those five colors in bulk. Now, what exactly do I mean by bulk? Well, a half gallon goes a really long way. Now, you can pick up something smaller than this, but this is what I recommend. Having this will give you the opportunity to practice as much as you can without having to keep going back and forth. And actually, the more little tubes you get, the more expensive it becomes. And this will last a really long time. Now, just keep in mind that through all of this, all of the descriptions of these and the links will be down below. So you can determine exactly what it is that you're gonna need but I'm gonna to link to things that I recommend. Okay, so now we know we're gonna use the half gallons. So let's figure out exactly what colors we need. These are the five colors that I recommend. Titanium white, Mars black, bright red, phthalo blue, and canary yellow. And now that we have the paint, what's next? Brushes. Technically you could paint without brushes, but I don't recommend it. Finger painting is fun, but it's not gonna get you anywhere. Let's talk about the five brushes that you absolutely need, in my opinion, of course, when you're just starting off. We're gonna begin with the flat brush. Now this flat brush is your most versatile brush. It is designed to spread a large amount of paint very evenly across the canvas, but also gives you a nice edge. Now let's talk about its shorter and more precise cousin, the bright brush. Now, unlike your large brush, this one is designed to spread a small amount of paint very boldly across the canvas and it's used for very flat lines and very sharp edges. So now let's talk about the round brush. Now I've got two here, but they're both technically used for the same thing, one just on a much smaller scale. So they're basically used for sketching, outlining, detail work, filling in small areas, things like that. Next, we have our filbert's brush. So this one's good for blending, uh, rounding out the soft edges of, say, flowers. Uh, it's great for leaves, but they can also be used for details, but it's a practice thing. Next probably the most important in my opinion, your fan brush. Now this one's used specifically for blending and detailing. And last but not least, 
your palette knife. Okay, granted that's not a brush, but it's almost essential for mixing. You do not want to mix your paints with your brush. You're going to get it all in there, you're going to waste a lot of it. So we're not here to waste, so we're going to get a palette knife. All right, so that was really loud. That's our brushes. Now there's two types of brushes I want you to get. You want to get synthetic brushes and natural bristle brushes. Now I'll link below to both sets, so don't worry about it. Just trust me, get both of them. You want to practice between the two. They have totally different applications and they're really meant for a lot of different things. So just get both. All right, so now we've got the paints, we've got our brushes, what's next? We need something to paint on. And we could use paper, but that's just silly. We're not gonna do that, we're artists. Full disclosure, you could just paint on a surface uh, without propping it up, but I don't think that gives you the proper experience. Plus, I think you should have some sort of something to paint on. Now, what is that? An easel, of course. So what I do recommend is a tabletop one. Now with these tabletop ones, you can either get wood or you can get metal. What I do recommend is you get metal. They're just a little bit easier to handle, they're a little bit more sturdy, and they have wider applications of different things that you can use. So I recommend this guy. Super easy to use, incredibly durable. There you go. What did that take, two seconds? Done. All right, so let's figure out what we're gonna put on this easel. What I recommend is all three of these. We're going to start with mixed media paper. So mixed media paper gives you the opportunity to practice without having to worry about cost. Now these little notebooks are pretty inexpensive and they have a lot of paper in them. So it gives you the opportunity to sort of mess around with the skill, right? If you want to learn how to make a tree before you go into painting on a canvas, which is pretty expensive, this gives you that opportunity. So we're gonna start with that. All right, so let's put that to the side for a second. What's next? Well, the most obvious, canvas. We don't need to go too expensive with these. They always have, if you go to say a Michaels or a Blick, they always have a package, maybe about four of these. This is a 16 by 20, which is what I recommend. It's, the, it's one of the biggest sizes that you can get in bulk and still keep it cheap. They have a, a five pack of these for 20, which it seems like a lot at first, but it actually isn't. Now this is a double primed canvas. And we wanna get that. We don't wanna get raw canvas because then you're gonna have to get into buying gesso and all this other stuff. That's later on. So just get yourself some cheaper pre-primed canvases. All right, so I did, I spoke about three options, right? So what's the last option? Well, that would be canvas board. Now canvas board, in my opinion, is the balance between practicing and your finished product. This gives you the opportunity to keep the cost low and practice on something that feels a bit more like a canvas. When you get into this paper, these are good for testing out certain things but this is good to practice what your finished product might feel like with the brushes. Okay, let's put that over there. We're gonna grab this again. Stick that right there for now. All right, so that seems like we're done, but right, we have two more categories. So what's next? Well, we need something to actually put these paints on. Now again, in a previous video, I spoke about some of the things that we have around the house that we can use for certain applications like putting paint on. Uh, one of the things I spoke about was wax paper. Super simple, you could pick this up at any local store, a Dollar Tree, something very cheap. You can get it for two bucks, which keeps the cost really low, but it runs out pretty quickly. Now, another option I like to use are paper plates. Now, full disclosure, this is a big cost. If I, I What I usually do is I go to Costco and I buy my paper plates in bulk. Um, and I use these just because they're super easy to just throw away. And I like that, I don't like a big mess. But let's say, you know, we wanna be a little bit more professional. Well, the next on that list then would be palette paper. Now, palette paper isn't cheap, but it is the closest thing you can get to actually having a palette and keeping the convenience of just tossing everything when you're done with it. All right, so let's put that there for a second, put that there. Okay, so what's next? Well, we do have two more options. We have, and full disclosure, I don't like using these, but you could use an actual palette, all right? You can get these in a variety of different sizes. Uh, this one is sort of a press board, right? They make a bunch of different, they have wood ones, they have plexiglass, fiberglass, there's tons of different options. Whatever that is to you, it's perfectly fine. I would say keep the cost low since these things are relatively inexpensive and the higher quality of these that you go, the more expensive they get, all right? so. All right, well, we don't want to buy a cheap one, right? Because these, the way that this is designed, it can chip, and it's going to be really hard to get that paint off. And we don't really want to chip any of this. Uh, you can see here on the side that I've got a little bit of 
paint still left on mine because it gets a little tough to, to sort of get that off. All right, so what does that mean for our next option? Well, this next one is probably, in my opinion, the best type of palette, but it is the most expensive. And I don't have one, so I'll just kind of link to it below. But that is a glass palette. And the reason it's the best, in my opinion, is because the way that the paint sits on the glass and how easy it is to clean makes it incredibly valuable. All right, so so far we know what we're getting, right? We have the essentials. We've got our paints, we've got our brushes, canvases, easel, palettes, all of that. So we know all of those things, but there are a couple things that I would say are essential. So we're gonna call those the extras. So when we talk about acrylics, it's a water-based paint. So they're pretty easy to clean, but we need to use water throughout. Now, any type of water will work. It doesn't have to be distilled, anything special, just straight out of the tap, doesn't really matter, but you need something to put that water in. So now, okay, you could use a regular glass from your cupboard, but we don't really wanna do that. We wanna get something specific. Now there are two options. You can either go the cost-effective option, which would be some sort of glass jar. Now these glass jars are great, but over time you're gonna get paint in there. It's gonna be hard to get out. It might mix into the water. So another recommendation that I have is a plastic cup. Just like our paper plates, these plastic cups are good, but they do have an added cost and you will continue to buy that. But as a convenient thing that you could just throw out, love these. So we have our containers, we know what we're gonna put our water in, perfect. But now we need some cleaning supplies. So what are some of the cleaning supplies that I uh, would imagine is probably the most important? Well, we're gonna start with first your paper towels. Now when it comes to paper towels, use any you want, but what I recommend are selecticides. These are the easiest because you don't need a ton all the time. Now, just like your plastic cup, these paper towels are an added cost. But paper towels, or especially something to dry your brushes off with, is one of those costs that you're gonna continually need to get. So how do we keep our costs a little bit lower, but still have something substantial to make sure that we're getting the proper cleaning out of these brushes? Well, what I like to do is I like to use disposable washcloths. Now you can get these at say um, a Home Depot or a Lowe's, something like that. They have those big packs of like 36. And I mean, these are pretty large, right? This is fold it in half, fold that up, right? These are pretty large and they go a long way. Plus you could wash these. So even though they're, they're disposable, you, they last a pretty long time. All right, so let's put that to the side for a second. What's next? We need something to actually clean the physical brushes with. Now, what do we get for that? They make tons of brush cleaner. Uh, if you go to any art store, like a Michaels or a Blick, like I said before, they'll have an aisle just full of brush cleaners. Don't use a uh, dish soap or a Murphy's oil. Uh, they do clean them, but what they won't do is help you prolong the life of your brushes. And we're trying to make sure that we're getting the most out of our equipment. So what I recommend is the Master's Brush Cleaner. This is probably my favorite. I use this all of the time. Pick and choose whichever one you want really doesn't matter. Most of the actual physical brush cleaners will do the job. This one just is my favorite and it's my recommendation. So if you don't wanna go through much trial and error with this, go with the masters. All right, so we've got our brush cleaner, but we need something to sort of get that paint out of the bristles. And this one, again, an added cost, but goes a long way actual stand for your brushes. This thing has a little bit of a grate on the inside so you can scrub it against your brushes and you can hang your brushes upside down when you're doing this. And the reason you want to hang your brushes upside down is because here at the ferrule, that's what that metal piece is called, this here, here at the ferrule it's crimped in but also glued. So if you take your brushes and you turn them up so the bristles are facing up, that water is going to seep down into the glue and eventually break it open. So we want to make sure that we leave our brushes hanging upside down. So that's why this is very important. So we're almost done. We got one more thing to talk about and that is non-essentials, right? So we've got our essentials. We want to talk about some non-essentials. Now, Although these things are in no way a necessity, I find them incredibly important and they make my life very easy when I'm painting. So what's that first non-essential? Duct tape. Now, you've seen it all of my painting videos. I use duct tape all the time. It's one of those things that I constantly keep around the house and it makes it easy for me to pin down my palette paper so I don't have it moving around when I'm trying to paint. There's no real discussion in there. That's essentially what that is. Next, and this one's really big, tablecloth. I use this all the time. Now you don't really see it in my painting videos, but when I'm testing things out, I use a lot of tablecloths and I especially use it on the floor every time I'm painting. I have carpet in this office and I don't want to get any paint on there. It's going to be impossible to get out. Another non-essential, I don't have it with me. And this is one of those things that it, why it's on the last part of the list 
get yourself an apron. It's much more difficult to get paint out of clothes than it is out of an apron. We want something designated. All right, well, there we go. That's all we need. We've got our kit assembled. We've got our essentials and our non-essentials. Now, I recommend taking this for what it's worth. These are the things that I wish when I was just starting off somebody would have told me to get. It's going to allow you the ability to practice and make sure you get better before you can jump into some of the more expensive things. Again, this is going to be the first in a series of things to help beginning painters get through that hump. Next video we're going to go over is color theory. I want to make sure that before you jump into any of this, you understand what it is that you're using and how to use it. And with that being said, we're going to end the video. I'm really glad that you decided to spend a few minutes of your day with me. I'm really happy that you're here, and I hope that you join in for future episodes. So have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.